My name is Ranger Michael Wood, and one of the unique aspects of Stone Mountain State Park is it actually has over 20 miles of designated trout streams. So within those streams, and the reason that we're here today, because I feel like it's very important, um, in these designated trout streams, you actually have brook trout, rainbow trout, and also brown trout. Now, what do those trout eat? So that's the question that we're asking. So the answer is aquatic insects, more specifically, macroinvertebrates. Uh, you may ask yourself, what is a macroinvertebrate? All that means is that you can see it with the naked eye and it has no vertebra, or so it has no backbone. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of quick sampling techniques, and then we'll go through of what we found in the water and show you how that relates uh, to stream quality, also um, to how it relates to fly selection if you're fly fishing. So it's multifacet. All right, so the first demonstration or the first method of sampling is as easy as picking up rocks. So you pick up rocks in the stream, you look to see if there's anything on there. Um, there's not a lot in this one. Let me get a little, let me pick up one more sample. So here, with this sample that I've picked up, you actually see what looks like clumps of sand or rock. Uh, to the untrained eye, that would look like uh, merely just a gathering or a, a small deposit on the bottom of this rock, but it's actually one of the macroinvertebrates or aquatic insects that we're talking about. This is caddisfly larva. So what they do is they build like a little encasing of sand and rocks. Sometimes it'll be sticks or twigs or leaves, um, and that's where they, they stay inside of. Um, they'll later hatch out into flying insects, and so that's uh, one of the macroinvertebrates that we have here at Stone Mountain. The second method, real quick, of just showing you, this is a D-shaped net. So what this involves is just kicking around rocks on the bottom of the stream, and what's happening is you're kicking around, you're actually, uh, you get deposits in the net, and those are macroinvertebrates and, and debris off of the bottom that have washed into the net. Um, and then you just do an analysis of what you found. In the process of sampling this stream, some of the things that we found that are very common here at Stone Mountain, and you can see here, this is a golden stonefly. It's indicated because it has a two fork tail. Now, one thing that's very significant about uh, the golden stonefly is the fact that it is very intolerant to pollution. So you're not gonna find this around cities. You're not gonna find this in areas, and that's one thing that makes it more unique to mountain streams, the ones like we have here. Um, another species that you're gonna have that's very intolerant to pollution is a water penny. With water pennies, they actually don't hatch out into a flying insect. Um, they just stay in this form, uh, nymph form, basically on the bottom of the stream. Um, but they're also an indicator of, of an intolerant species. So you only find these in the healthiest of mountain streams. And then finally, the last one that we're gonna talk about, it's kind of tough to, to get, is a mayfly nymph. Now it's different than the stonefly because it has a three fork tail. Um, and that's how you identify it. Again, only found in intolerant uh, streams basically meaning that they have to have high levels of dissolved oxygen, very little sedimentation, turbidity uh, in these streams to be able to survive. So these are what the trout eat whenever they're in the stream. So this is what they survive on are these species. All right, so if you were in a moderate, uh, uh, or if you were in a different stream and you were looking for a moderate pollution insect, it would actually be more of damselfly or dragonflies. Um, you'll find crayfish in those streams. And if it's a really polluted stream, if it's close to a city or a, an area uh, to where it's affected heavily by pollution, it's actually gonna have black fly larvae and it'll also uh, have some leeches in those type streams. So the macroinvertebrates that you find are actually an indicator of what water quality that you have in a particular area. It also is a very handy reference because here at Stone Mountain, we have a beginner's fly fishing program that I teach. Uh, and it basically what you're trying to do whenever you go and sample a stream is you want to imitate these species of aquatic insects or macroinvertebrates. And that's how that you can be most successful fly fishing. If you can find something that's close, that's what they're used to feeding on. 
um, and you can increase your success rate.